Hey guys, Matt from Crank Engineering. I just want to do a quick video on the concept of torque. Okay, so torque is the concept of applying a twisting force around an axis and we can demonstrate it pretty quickly and clearly with a bolt and nut. And torque is simply the application of a force some distance from the axis to make that twisting action happen. So torque is measured in uh, units that relate this lever arm length and the force that's applied at a particular distance. So in the imperial scale, generally torque is measured in foot pounds and in the metric scale, it's measured in Newton meters. And really the, both of them equate to roughly the same thing. So let's take a, an example where this, this is a half inch UNC bolt and a three quarter inch ring and open end wrench. And let's just say it's around about 250 millimeters long. I'll use metric measures because that's easy for me to do. So, at a, so that's a quarter of a meter, 250 millimeters. So at a quarter of a meter, if I apply a force, a given force in this direction, then I can generate a particular torque around this uh, bolt. So if I applied 10 newtons of force and the lever arm is a quarter of a meter, then a quarter of 10 is 2.5 newton meters. So it's just a simple multiplication of the lever arm length multiplied by the force applied at the end of that lever. So this is an important concept for not just bolts and nuts and other fasteners on your motorcycle, but also concepts like acceleration of a motorcycle. Torque is what does the accelerating of your bike. So and we'll talk about that in more detail in another video, but I just wanted to start the conversation and the understanding about torque and the relationship of this lever arm length and the force that you apply at the end of it. So if you have a shorter lever, here's a, just a standard adjustable wrench. If I have a shorter lever, this lever might only be, let's say 200 millimeters, it's 0.2 of a meter. If I still wanted to achieve 2.5 newton meters, I'd need to apply a larger force at this end because the lever arm is shorter. This one's shorter than that one. So I need to apply more force to get the same torque at this point here. So in practice, uh, in, especially for bolts uh, and other threaded fasteners, generally there'll be a recommendation in a service manual for the torque to use on that bolt in that particular assembly and that's determined by the engineer when they design that that assembly so to do that there's a tool called a torque wrench which is used for that job and you can adjust on this scale here what torque you wish to achieve at the socket end and once you pull on that, it will give you a, a loud click indication to tell you that you've reached the desired torque. So these are generally considered a precision instrument, so you don't want to be dropping them or anything like that, or using them as hammers or anything else like that. And if you're working in a, you know, a quality approved organization, these would be calibrated maybe every six months or three months or whatever was appropriate for the application. So you can simply just adjust this dial to achieve whatever torque setting you wish and then lock it down and then use it like a normal uh, socket wrench. That's one style, the click type. Here's another one. And this is a, this one's a cat one I bought off uh, eBay. Um, similar style in terms of adjusting the, uh, this is foot pounds so I can adjust this dial here and it tells me in the display how many foot pounds I'm setting it to. So let's just pick 80, close that off and use this the same in the same manner. So this one's got a three quarter inch drive and this one's a half inch drive. So I could still use either of these wrenches 
on my half inch bolt, which has a three quarter head. It fits either of those, and if I, I could use one tool or the other, it doesn't matter. They both do the same job. As you can see, the half inch one's just slightly longer. Hopefully you can see, just slightly longer. So in theory, I could apply a higher torque if I pulled on this and this the same amount, because this one's longer, I could generate a higher torque at this point here. Here's a rather old, this is an Australian made one. This company doesn't, uh, I don't believe they produce torque wrenches anymore. Warren and Brown, so pretty well known Australian company making automotive tooling. Gone overseas, I'm sure, like everybody else. But this is a deflecting beam torque wrench and the similar process applies. I loosen this nut here and I move this, I don't know what you can call this thing. You move this down to the setting you're interested in. So if I wanted, you know, this is in foot pounds. If I wanted 80 foot pounds, I just move it down to the 80, lock it in again, put my socket onto my bolt and pull. And because this whole beam deflects, when this touches the angled plate here, you've reached your torque setting. So just a different style, and I couldn't even tell you if this is accurate or not. I don't even remember where I got this one, and I don't think I've actually ever used it in anger. So they're the types of tools you would use for achieving a particular torque on a bolt, and hopefully that's enough just to get you started to understand the relationship between the lever arm length and the force that you apply and how that generates a given torque around the socket or the bolt in this particular case. So we haven't talked about anything like thread lubrication or thread friction or any other things that uh, are important when you're doing up a threaded fastener, but that can wait for another video. That's enough for today. Thanks for watching.